My guys, I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise I will not let my bias for Amelia affect my evaluation of her. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace and this is a Princess Connect video. And today we're gonna to be discussing the ReZero collab characters, a kind of evaluation review of them and seeing how exactly they fit into the meta, whether it be for Lunar Tower, for PVE, for PVP, etc., etc. However, before I give you any other ideas, I do want you guys to know if you really want these characters, just freaking go for them. Like I said, playing a game without your favorite characters, like you might as well not play at all, right? And so to kick things off, let's start off with the lovely Amelia, AKA the best girl in the game. This is her beautiful face, uh, if you guys have not seen it before. And so let's get on with her skills. And so Amelia is kind of like a first of her type hybrid character where she heals, but also does damage. And if you guys have been watching me for a while, you'll know that I'm pretty iffy about these Jack of all trades characters, but master of none. And so that's kind of the context for Emilia. So let's start off with her Union Burst, Promised Flower Garden. This UB is essentially completely defensive where she'll recover HP for the ally with the lowest HP percentage and she'll also give all of the allies a physical defense and magic defense buff. And this buff is actually quite strong considering it has a 0.9 times a 90% scaling on your skill level. So for us today, that would be around like 120-ish physical defense and magic defense. And all of this is going to last for 18 seconds. Honestly, really, really straightforward. So with that said, let's move on to the skill one, which is please Puck. And so with this skill one, she will deal moderate magic damage to the frontmost enemy and also increase magic attack to herself for a moderate amount. Out. And so now you can see why I'm like, well, she's kind of hybrid. She, this skill, this skill reads like a mage skill, right? Whereas the UB reads like a supporter, a healer skill. And that's because they are those kinds of skills. However, again, she is very much a hybrid character. As for this skill itself, I believe her base magic attack is actually quite low compared to other mages. And so for Amelia, she has 20,000 attack at level 227, just JP things I mean. And let's go over to Sama Maho, who is also a mage. She is going to have 23,000. That is essentially gapping her by 2.5K, Amelia getting gapped. However, with this magic attack buff, which I believe is almost 100% uptime, she is going to be quite comparable, quite competitive. And so honestly, the skill one is pretty freaking straightforward. With that said, let's move on to skill two, which is ice shards. I don't know, man, this is <laughs> it's kind of starting to sound like Kyoka. And so what this skill does is it inflicts small magic damage to random enemies within range four times. Now, uh, this is not exactly a very accurate translation of what exactly it does. And it's also actually the reason why I have that Sama Maho page up, right? Because she, for her UB, Sama Maho, she has something very, very similar. Inflicts medium magic damage to random enemies in range four times. Now, the thing about Sama Maho's skill is that this skill will attack up to four enemies. So it could be like, oh, one, two, three, four. On the other hand, coming back to Emilia, her skill two is actually, well, out of these five targets, I'm gonna pick one of them and then attack them four times. And so you can see why it's kind of confusing. I know that's not how this one reads and that is certainly not how this one reads either, but you guys do kind of need to take me for my word on that one. And if you guys do play JP or you guys play CN or Thailand or KR or any other server that already has the ReZero girls, please let us know if I am correct. I'm relatively sure, I'm pretty sure. Now I'm less sure, but I'm still pretty sure. All right, and so after that, to round things out, we have the EX skill, which is just giving her magic attack, which remember guys, actually does boost your heals. Okay, okay, okay. Let's have a look at this insanely long loop pattern. All right, so we've got skill one going into skill two, remembering that skill one is the buff. And then as for the loop itself, we've got skill one here, we've got skill one here, we've got skill one here, and then one, two, three, skill one again. So you can see why I'm saying it's essentially 100% uptime on that magic attack. And so with all of that, that being said, where exactly does Amelia fit in with the meta? Ah, uh, it's, it's a tough one. So because she has some damage and some healing, that single target healing with the big AOE defense up, sometimes people have managed to find a use for her in clan battle. Yes, in clan battle. A character that is kind of comparable would be your Summer Kokoro. So Summer Kokoro, for you guys who are newer and don't really know what she does, she essentially heals people and she also does defense down. And so Summer Kokoro definitely has had her time in CB. We've also got other characters such as Rin, where Rin is going to be 
healing everybody and giving physical attack and magic defense, you kind of like starting to see what kind of relationship I'm trying to point out. And that is that these characters have some element of healing, but also some offensive capability. Rin has her physical attack up, Kokoro has her buff, uh, which has a physical attack up as well as a defense down. And so in that regard, what Emilia has is that she has the heal, but also the big defense up, but also offensive capabilities in her mage-like skill 1 and skill 2. And so yeah, I repeat, believe it or not, sometimes people have used her in CB. On the other hand, she certainly could be used in arena because if we go back to her skill and how I explain the skill to this bad boy, this is a little bit unpredictable. It could hit like a carry and it could instantly nuke them. However, it might also hit a tank and therefore wouldn't do too much. So there is a scenario where she could hit like a taunting tank and potentially do a fair bit of damage. Yeah, honestly, like this is some pretty high level copium. I I probably wouldn't use Amelia in CV or in PvP unless like I knew exactly what I was doing. Because like I said, I'm not really a big fan of the jack of all trades, right? If I want damage, I'll go get a damage character like Skiaru or like Kyoka. And if I do want healing in terms of like stall and stuff, I would take the Summer Kokoro, I would take the Maho, I would take the Misato with UE. And so hopefully that helps you understand why Emilia is like she's freaking cute like for starters but if we are talking from a meta point of view she's not exactly like a must pull however however she is a collab unit and so there are some people who are scared that maybe we won't make it to year three or maybe like we won't get the rerun and yes if we do follow like all of the other versions we will get a rerun in about a year and a bit's time and so that leads to the conclusion of if you're meta slaving don't pull for her, kind of wait until the next time she comes because the next time she comes back, she is going to come back with Rem on the same banner. And so what you could do is you could pull for both on the same banner, get one of them before pity and then pity the other one. Well, that's best case scenario anyway. Worst case scenario is that you have to spark both. <laughs> what the frick? Okay, so that's Amelia in a nutshell. I want to talk about Rem next. Now, Rem is quite good. So she's a midline attacker. So if you think like a Halloween Shinobu, kind of like that. With her UB, Al Huma, she inflicts medium physical damage to all enemies within the front line. Damage dealt is increased to targets who are immobilized. So you can imagine that she is going to be a cleave character. However, this this immobilized, it's actually an insane deal because you can see that the multipliers are going from 2 to 3.6 and from 25 to 45. And so what that means is that this Union Burst has pretty insane synergies with other characters such as like Kasumi, but in particular like your New Year's Ray and your Tsumugi. Moving on to skill 1, we've got El Huma, which is inflicts small physical damage to the frontmost enemy, inflicts freeze to the target. And freeze is a form of immobilize. So is stun, so Nozomi. And so what this freeze does is that it is actually going to last for three seconds and it's going to do a little bit of damage and they're going to be stuck there for a while. And if they get hit by the UB whilst frozen, they will take this line of damage. All right, and so that's pretty straightforward. We've got freeze and then freeze into the UB. Hopefully that's how it works out. But as we all know, arena never works out how we want it to. And so lastly, we do have grant a medium recover HP amount to the ally with the lowest HP percentage, which is nice. But again, it just kind of makes me feel like if you're going to be an attacker, just be an attacker kind of thing. Moving on to the EX skill, we've got an increase to the physical attack, which is a given. If it wasn't that, that'd be so freaking weird. And then with the initial pattern, we've got a skill one auto attack into a skill one again. That could be crippling with UE. However, we are not getting UE this time. So let's forget about that. With the loop pattern, we have the skill two healing going into attack, attack, skill one into a normal attack. And so as you can see, her freeze is actually not that frequent. And so she is going to rely on the characters like New Year's Ray as well as Tsumuki to provide that extra CC for her to be able to deal big damage. And so as you can imagine, because of these kinds of skills, like you got the physical damage, which is dependent on immobilization, where bosses and CB bosses and Lunar Tower bosses, none of them can actually be immobilized. She is not going to do overly well in your PvE. And I think you guys probably would have picked it up by now, but essentially she could be a powerhouse in the PvP. And so should you roll for her? From a meta point of view, it is still a no. Everybody is kind of getting thrown into the no bucket today because 
That's just how it is. Doesn't matter how much I love Amelia, doesn't matter how much I love Rem or remember her, they are not getting pulled by me, unfortunately, this time. And so with that said, we are going to head over to Ram, who will be our lovely welfare unit for the event. And so starting off with her UB, she inflicts medium magic damage to all enemies, and she also inflicts bind to all enemies. Sounds like Tsumugi to me, and also sounds like she should be paired up with Rem. And if you guys did come up to that conclusion, that's almost right, except for the fact that Rem does do magic damage and Rem does physical damage. However, in a vacuum, bind is always really freaking good. Like all forms of CC is great. So with that, let's move on to skill one, which is Fura. Now this is another really dank one, which is dependent on whether the target is immobilized or not, aka hard CC'd or not. So she'll inflict medium magic damage to the frontmost enemy and knock them back a small distance. However, if they are immobilized, the damage dealt and the knockback distance will be increased to a large amount. And so to be honest, I think that's pretty clear as to what's going on. She is going to be doing freaking double damage for both of them. And she is also going to be knocking back twice the distance if they are immobilized. Ah, uh, man. Imagine a freaking CC team with like your Ram, with like your Rem, with like your Tsumuki, with like your New Year's Ray, man. That probably sucks because like my theory crafting sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and so moving on to the skill 2, we have Clairvoyance, where she activates her Clairvoyance for the enemy with the highest physical attack. And so what that does is it causes that enemy to miss its next attack 100%. Now this one is really, really interesting because there are actually some pretty big brain strats you could do with this. One of the strats is actually to pair Ram with Hatsune, and for Hatsune to go and hit a Reno or some other hard carry, and then for Ram to actually place this Clairvoyance on that Reno, so that when Reno does the Reno bomb because she just got like all of this TP boost from her Yukari and her Yuki, that big bomb AOE UB is going to like completely miss. And so all I can say is that there are a lot of different opportunities in which you can combine this Ram with Hatsune or some other like Eo as well. Some of these like magical assassins, there is opportunity for something like really, really freaking dank. However, I'm not gonna tell you about it because like I don't know about it aside from like the Reno and potentially the Ninon comps. And also do be warned that these guys, as well as all of the other targeted skills, they are caught by taunts. So like New Year's Ray. All right, and so with that, let's have a look at the EX skill, which is an increase to her magic attack. Literally, if it was anything else, I'd be like, bruh. And then as for the attack pattern, we've got the guaranteed skill two blind going into the skill one, which is a knockback. It kind of reminds me of Mimi actually. From there, we have a normal attack, normal attack, guaranteed blind from the skill two, normal attack, and then a skill one, big damage. This loop, it's kind of okay because it's quite hard to make use of this blind over here. However, knowing that this blind is gonna be thrown out first, that's why like those Reno shenanigans are possible. And so just coming back up here, we've got magic attack increase. We've got a clairvoyance thing, like some CC. We've got medium magic damage. And then up here, we've got medium magic damage again. As you can probably tell from my demeanor, this is not gonna be a CB character. And from all of the different references to like arena comps, you can probably tell that Ram has most utility in PVP. And so that's gonna leave us with the question, should you pull for Ram? Well, you can't. You can only earn her as a welfare unit, and so that's pretty good. However, should you go ahead and farm her up to four or five stars? I would say probably not. I think if you are going to use her, like you really, really do want to do the big brain strats, you can sure go for it. At least four star and potentially even five star. However, especially with the upcoming summer characters, I cannot recommend you actually sinking more gemmies, doing the refreshes to be able to get more of these ram shards. You need to save, man. You guys, you guys all need to save for the summers. And so with that, my guys, that is going to bring us to the end of the video. And therefore, I want to pass off the question to you guys. Did this evaluation today sway you guys in wanting to roll or not wanting to roll for Rem and Amelia? Because for me, I am a massive Amelia fan. However, I am also a slave to the, the summer units and knowing hopefully that the Amelia and the Rem comes back, I am going to take my chances then. And so my guys, let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving something, I would really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And so my guys, if you did enjoy this video or you found it kind of helpful, please consider a like, a subscribe, and maybe a notification bell on, ding. However, as Rem once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.